It's a beautiful Monday morning. Welcome to The Breakfast Time for Off the Press. As always, we'll take you through the pages of our national dailies and then have, I guess, join the conversation. Open Abon Kutaria is on standby. He's a public affairs analyst. It's good to have you join us this Monday morning. Good morning. Good morning, Mercy. Good morning, Kofi. And good morning, Nigeria. Okay. Uh, let's take a look at the leadership newspaper and uh, the attention would be on the top stories on the leadership newspaper this morning. And uh, uh, looking at the banner caption, APC chairmanship aspirant bank on governors to survive consensus plot and uh, party alerts on fake registration website, six security agencies intervention. You also have Ebube Agu Vigilante beheaded in a boy. And Super Eagles crashed out of AFCON 2021. Very, very sad. 102 die from 510 Lassa fever cases in 2021. That's according to the federal government. And gunmen kill four mining workers in Plateau State. Digital disruption in financial institution threatens job security. This is some of the headlines on the leadership newspaper this morning. Up next, we go to the Punch newspaper with the major headline. Uh, it starts with a kicker, Electoral Act Amendment, and it says, Bill bars voters from contesting candidates' certificates in court uh, with the following writers. Only co-contestants at primaries can sue on candidate certificates, credentials, ex-INEC director, and new provision will be challenged. National Assembly can't masquerade those Seeking Office says SA, and that can be found on page two of the Punch newspaper. Next one at the top of that uh, uh, front page, 5G deployment gets boost. CBN gives telcos forex priority. You can check that out on 29, uh, the 29th page of the Punch newspaper. Also, PSC summons IG over police recruitment. Workers set for strike. Interesting. A sacked NSITF in management saved two billion naira left 30 billionaire debt, says Ingigay. U.S. team CSO witnessed M.K. Abiola's death in Abuja clinic that's coming from Nigeria's former head of state, Abdul Salami. That's an interesting one uh, uh, and an interesting part of Nigeria's history. Still with the punch in East Ripper, wheat production crashes by 89.4%. Bakery operators lament. Rising governance cost uh, recession others raises federal government spending by 183%. That's according to some reports. Still with the punch in East Ripper, yam thief shoots farmer or farm owner to death in Oshun. A suspect arrested. Totally unnecessary death there. FRC plants radar guns as 300 killed in 2021. Oshun or Ogun crashes. Uh, don't be scared. Those are not uh, real guns. Those are radar guns, I think, to help them do their work better. Shun sexual engagements. Elizade can't harbor pregnant students. VC. Stop imposing hijab beret on students. Aquara warns principals. Uh, Lagos businessman tortures apprentice to death over missing 1,000 naira fleas. Very sad one. And NDLEA seizes UK Saudi bound cocaine. In wigs, six arrested in Abuja. Mercy, I never knew you could hide cocaine in wigs. That's quite I don't want, how did they even do it? I have no idea. <laughs> of course, you shouldn't have an idea. <laughs> All right, let's move away from uh, the Punch newspaper this morning and check out The Nation. On The Nation, banner caption says, Subsidy, labor, intensify mobilization for protest. And planned action unnecessary, says federal government. Watch... Government should do by TUC. That's also what you find there. And they're asking that the refineries should actually be up and functional. And also, apart from the fact that they should be up and functional, they should be able to produce uh, the capacity that has been postulated, however. You also find six months forex inflows can upset Nigeria's $44 billion debt. That's another header you find on the Nation newspaper this morning. Conflicting rules, MBA yet to take action on lawyers. No asset on the prize, says Amcon. And 2022, Oyetola challenges opponent to obtain farms. 
Eagles' poor tactics cause loss to Tunisia, says Okocha. Well, th th that's exactly what you it know, is. You, you know, we have one. We have almost 200 million football coaches in Nigeria, so we'd expect to have uh, several analyses going on uh, about the, that particular loss. But, but if you actually look at it, I mean, if you not that I actually watched the game, but I saw a little bit of you know the all the highlights of the game, and you can tell that what really happened was the fact that we lost it. Now, this the Tunisians could actually predict. Uh, you know, the next move of the Super Eagles. And that's really sad. You know, because we had the balls going. So they pro probably had to study us, understand the next move we're going to take. You constantly see the pressure on, uh, you know, uh, Moses Simon. And that's a lot of, a we lot. Should, and then you should. expected the change and all of that. My, uh, my heart is broken. I wish uh, we didn't really have to crash out. Um, I, I hope uh, uh, the production <laughs> head is listening. We should totally move Mercy to the, to the sports desk. Okay, uh, let's move straight next to the uh, Nigerian and Tribune with the banner headline APC Chairmanship as parents under security scrutiny. I wonder why that is always an issue. Uh, it has the following writers. President likely to get dossier under pressure to checkmate serving ex-governors. Hmm. Uh, governors, of course, have an increasing uh, grip on the major political parties. Still more writers under that headline. Convention, an acid test on Buhari's corruption war, South-South Group, Balabuari may join race. That can be found on page 22 of the Nigerian Tribune. Still with the paper, IKT 2022, uh, APC can't win without Southern candidate Bami Sile. And I think one that will be, uh, will touch home with our guest, Opunabo in Kotaria, 112 illegal refineries discovered <laughs> in rivers. I can see a picture of Governor Yeson Wike there. Uh, we'll talk about that. Court strikes out suit challenging legality of Buni led Ketika Committee, um, backs Supreme Court's validation of committee. Uh, no end in any end in sight to the court cases with the APC. Uh, time will tell. Nigeria's January bond issuance oversubscribed by 139 billion naira. This is according to the DMO. Abiola took ill, died, uh, not poisoned. Abdul Salami claims uh, 4.1 trillion naira customs revenue target will threaten private investment. That is on page six of the Nigerian Tribune. More headlines many hospitalized as train crashes truck tricycle in Kano. Really sad. Gunmen kill four mining workers in Plateau State. In Plateau State, bandits in military uniform kill three, destroy 11 houses in Taraba. NDLEA intercepts UK Saudi bound cocaine concealed in synthetic hair. Mercy, what's going on? <laughs> it says, uh, has the following writers raids Abuja Garden, arrest six over drug cookies and noodles. We have drug cookies. I have no idea. And, and you know, I have no idea. Are, are, those, are those like <laughs> normal noodles like they say you go buy and the drugs inside? No, usually uh, this is what would happen. I'm actually trying to paint a picture. Okay. It would be laced. That's how they call it. Oh, probably oh. just. Uh, never heard the word before. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, I probably do some investigative journalism about that. More headlines. Aloha Kala among first persons I consulted when uh, nominated VP or Shiba just saying that as he visits Obama show and the late Olubado family. So it's, it's clear the vice president is not doing a friend friend in this matter. He's, he's going out to meet and consult. Okay. And um, that's it for the Nigerian Tribune. Well, let's have Opunabong Kataria join the conversation this morning. Thank you for joining us. We do appreciate your time. Thank you, Messi. So which of the headlines would you like to start off with this uh, Monday morning? I, I can't even remember any of them. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're just being sarcastic. Okay, so being, let's just be, Ni let's start off with the fact that Nigerians crash out of the AFCON, and that's a big one for us this morning. Well, it's a big one for you because I'm not a football fan. I don't watch football. Kofi, you should know that. You have to know <laughs> <laughs> I don't watch football. No, but let's share your thoughts on that. Let, let's quickly share your thoughts on it. Well, next time, uh, they should not allow the president to speak to them. <laughs> <laughs> that's, my, that's my thoughts on that. Because they were doing well and they crashed out shortly after his book came out. <laughs> I mean, you have to talk about how does that affect anything? How does that affect how the boys played and the tactics? Tell you, 
that is to tell you that you're asking the wrong person when it has to do with football. football. So we move on. About God. <laughs> Let's Mr. move on then. Miss St. Kutaria. I will speak to you tomorrow. Yeah? All right, all right. Some, be some people think, all you know. Right. I, can see the I don't think if I see them on the road, I won't be recognized. Show me right. pictures, I won't be recognized. <laughs> Let, let's move on. But you know, those who don't, those who don't watch football, we so I only watch when Nigeria is playing. But you obviously don't fall in that category. I mean, so so not, the, last time I watched, the last time I watched football was in 1994. Wow. When we begin to join me because of the very, an extremely close friend my classmate. Fantastic. That was the last time I watched football. Fantastic. And after that, I don't think I've ever watched football. All good, all good. So if, you're, if they're playing match, I choose the African match. Oh, it's all good. Okay, thank you very much. Mr. Kosa, let, let's go home to, to River State. Um, I'm, I'm very interested to know what your thoughts are on the moves by the governor of River State, His Excellency Yes on Wiki, um, to stop the suit finally. Well, it is interesting that he's uh, back from his long sojourn in the land of lethargic uh, sleep and inertia when he allowed these criminals to go on to perpetrate at the expense of rivers people or rivers residents because we held all kinds of toxic air that uh, was injurious to our health and still is Kofi were in Port Harcourt. So at least you'll appreciate what I'm talking about. The situation it was so bad that in the morning you get up, you cough, you're coughing out black substance your nostrils, black substance, all kinds of things. And uh, it affected the health of rivers residents. A lot of rivers people had cancer as a result of that. Uh, if we talk of dry cleaning, I mean, it was better for you to just dry clean a day when you want to wear that clothes. Because you dry clean and keep over uh, clean for two days, you realize that, that the whole essence is negated because you have to send it back to the dry cleaner. It was that bad. It can't open the doors of first air. It can't open your windows. I mean, you are practically imprisoned by that suit. And sentenced to death is tormented to by that suit. And uh, river people have all kinds of inexplicable diseases as a result of the suit. So we thank God that the government has woken up and uh, is now aligned to its responsibility rather than shifting the blame to the, night, the federal government. You have security votes. If you knew you were going to do this thing or you were capable of doing this thing, why do you have to wait till now? Is it because the result of the pressure mounted on him by some of us? Whatever it is, it's better late than never, they say, although uh, in most cases, uh, being late is it, 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 it tantamount to never. But in this case, it's better late than never. And so I'll commend it, whatever it is, I'll commend it. And the air is, I hear is. Uh, slightly better right now, but you don't expect an overnight or, or change. That's not possible. If he continues sustained and is committed to this uh, pursuit, then I think within six months or thereabouts, rivers residents will start getting fresh air once more. All right. All right. Uh, thank you, Ponabo. Uh, uh, we'll stay with the Nigerian Tribune. Uh, following that uh, story, uh, 112 illegal refineries discovered in River State 2. Go over to... Um, some, something that has to do with Nigeria's history. Of course, uh, former head of state Abdul Salami Abubakar has been making some statements in, over the weekend regarding the death of uh, the late Moshud um, Kolaole Abiola. Uh, he says Abiola took ill and died. He wasn't poisoned, uh, um, according to him. Um, he's been talking about, you know, Abiola's death, even saying the United States officials were there in some other papers. Um, what do you think about this? Is, should, should, should we have the former leaders of Nigeria uh, come out and inform the nation uh, about important parts of the nation's history. Because when Enes Shoniko uh, uh, passed away, uh, some Nigerians said he should have written a book about what happened particularly in 1992, 1993. But uh, what if he wasn't yes. talented? I mean, yes. you want to ask yourself that as well. Yeah. So what do you say to this, Ms. Nkotara? Well, let me put your response to what Mr. said. Probably wasn't talented. Yes, I agree. Right. But well, he could have commissioned. He could have commissioned somebody because uh, it, it, maybe if you have to remember, you must do something worth writing or write something worth reading. 
So he should have commissioned somebody to do that. And uh, if he's scared, he should have done to publish posthumously if he's actually scared of his life. But all those that were involved were out of the way. They were no longer alive, save Abu Salami. So I wonder why, uh, what would have made him uh, scared. Having said that, uh, the man involved, Abiola, is no longer alive. So it is the word of Abu Salami versus. It would have been the word of Abu Salami versus MQ Abiola. Then, but he's no longer alive. So Abu Salami can get up in the morning and say whatever he wants to say. That's his own business. Uh, of course, I would say Nigerians are no longer interested in what the Abu Salami will say because we have to do with uh, a major, momentous part history of our, of the country. Abiola, as far as most Nigerians are concerned, was murdered. Just like Yer Abiola was killed. Abiola was killed. And it would be extremely difficult for anybody could contradict that conviction so, that so, Nigerians have. Abiola, in synopsis, was killed. Are, are, there, evi are there evidence who actually proved that? If you look at all the testimonies, just hold on. If you look at all the testimonies before the Oputa panel, I mean, you can glean from what Roger and Ku said that Abiola was actually killed. And a lot of us believe that he was killed in order to steal or for, for all the uh, crisis that would have emerged and the Nigerians and the government that anticipated that his relief was going to participate. So there is nothing anybody will tell Nigeria. The owner is now on Abu Salami to prove, not for me to prove. I believe that he was, he was killed, he was poisoned. Let Abu Salami, just as Abacha was killed, poisoned. They just wanted to eliminate the, the group of people that they felt we are going to cause all this because we are the problems. That is the truth. That was what happened. So they killed Abu Salami. Yeah, for sorry, God forbid. They killed Abacha. They killed yeah, uh, uh, MQ Abiola. No, no, no but, but, but as much as you have all of these thoughts, as much as you have all of this, I mean, it's a good thing that you say that's, that's what you believe in, and that's, uh, these are your thoughts. But to, I mean, put the facts. Of most Nigerians. Thoughts of most Nigerians, but at the end of the day, you know that we need to work with Nigeria. facts. I mean, we I haven't been able to. So we, we need to establish the point that this is what we think and this is how we feel about some of these incidents that, that have happened. Said, said, but the fact that we have not been able of. to, you know, prove it. So we will still just leave it at the point that that's a speculation. But, but I, I, We're I, alleging. I, I like you to ask cannot, you. You cannot leave it at. Why, why would you leave it at the Salami's uh, uh, point? Uh, Why would you leave it at my own point? Uh, what if you don't prove? Mr. Nkotaria, <laughs> please, please. What is that? Yeah. So, so you, you, you're you claiming it's that... He's just a beneficiary of, of those deaths. So he's going to say anything he wants to say. In fact, that is what makes him suffer. Because he's a beneficiary Mr. of the death of uh, Abaka and M.K. Abiola. The major beneficiary. So, Mr. So Nkotaria... Uh, um, okay, you, you, these are your claims, of course. Um, you're entitled to opinion, but... Don't you... Uh, yeah, yeah, me, yeah. Coffee, yes, yes, sir. Don't you know that... If they don't, if he doesn't pay this, he's going to rub up negatively on him. So that is why he's suspect. So you think this is an image? It should not come from our doctor. We want a medical doctor that consulted the autopsy to come and tell us, not Abu Salam. So you think this is an, uh, an an image, You think this is an image laundering uh, interview? But but um, if you're saying that uh, Yara was was murdered, um, MK Abiola was murdered, and you even put Abacha in that. Um, Elite category. Abacha was murdered. That was the fact. So who, 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 by, who was just like Solomon and who committed who the murder? Who was responsible for, for, for these murders? As far as as far as concerned, the girls committed the murder. They were only they were only weapons. Girls, they are, they what what, what about that of that murder. of MKO? So we so, so were this. MKO. The, the, the circumstances surrounding his death. I have every right to say. When you look at the circumstances, I have every right to buy a cup of tea. I have every right to infect. So who, 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 who? And when you also, when you also hear what, what uh, 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 General Obasan just said, he said he was selected to have been killed a day or two days before his release. Killed, so by, killed, killed by who? About? Killed by who, sir? Obasan just said the government. Obasan just said the government. He said the government. They were to kill him in prison. He said it. 
Okay. So what are we talking about? Let, let, I, I think we need to move away from, you know, all of that because the conversation might never end, but it's a good thing to know that. I mean, all of this, as much as we believe in it, we haven't been able to prove it, you know, to the latter. Mm. So we, we look no, at no, the no, leadership. Don't say, don't say Nigeria. We, we don't look at it. Let's move away Nigeria. from, let's don't move away. Open up on Qataria. Let's look at the leadership newspaper. And at this point in time, the APC chairmanship is a stake as aspirant bank on governors to survive the consensus plot. The issue of indirect primaries, direct primaries and consensus has actually, you know, come up again as regards the bill and the law. Of course, you see what's going on with the APC. But let's share your thoughts on this one. What is there to, to be said? It's a norm. For you to get any party position, you must depend on the government. That was why the National Assembly came up with the direct primary. Because governors are now least laws. Even when as a party chairman, you take directions from the governor. The reverse was the case in the days of uh, what's his name, uh, the late president, so, uh, 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 Chagari. May you show rest in peace. Where the national chairman instructed Chagari on what to do and admitted it was the national chairman that sat at the head. And he was in control. That is not the case anymore. National chairman these days are almost like beggars. You go against a governor, they come after you. And why? Because the governors are the ones functioning the party. So you must depend on the governor for you to emerge as a national chairman. Not just national chairman. For you to emerge as a party officer. You must depend on the governor. If the governor says no, no. If they say yes, yes. So I don't think it's not, it's not anything new. And that shouldn't make a headline that national are depending on governors to emerge as uh, uh, candidates or to emerge as uh, 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 party officers. I don't think that should make it a headline. Okay. Maybe the paper didn't have a word to make it a headline, so it's a headline. Because, I mean, it's new, it's not new. It is a, it's, it's a normal thing in this country. Mr. Even, if you go against, even if you go against a governor, as a sitting chairman, they will work against you and ensure your removal. We have been seeing this thing. So what is new there? There's nothing new there. Mr. Nkutari, uh, 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 let, let, let's go back to the, the Tribune. And we'll stay with the All Progressives Congress, Congress for a bit um, because one would have thought that following the Supreme Court's uh, uh, validation of the uh, Keteka and Extraordinary Convention Planning Committee led by um, uh, uh, Governor Maima Labuni, that that would be that. But um, we're seeing that a court has struck out a suit challenging the legality of Bun the Buni-led uh, Keteka Committee. Um, why do we still have people going to court again when this issue has already been sorted out? And what can you say about the plethora of internal challenges and internal position facing the All Progressives Congress as we speak? Human being, Nigeria, generally litigious in nature. Mm. Even for the most inane reason, they will go to court. Everything will go to court. And we have Lawyers that ought to be divided for accepting certain views. And that's why people are calling there on the NBA to sanitize itself. Because you have all kinds of frivolous suits in court, wasting the time of the court. I think judges should also, uh, if the judges play, should play a major role in ensuring the cessation of this, what I call judicial menace. The Supreme Court has given a judgment. The only court you can go to after the Supreme Court is court of God, court of heaven. That's the only court you can go to. There is no other court in the land. So it is most ridiculous for anybody to go to a to an inferior court, a puny court, to challenge what the Supreme Court has said. And I think such litigants should be subjected to psychiatric cases. That is the truth. They should be subjected to psychiatric, both the litigants and the litigators. In other words, the clients and the lawyers should be subjected to psychiatric case. Because I wonder, it is a known fact. It's right law. Everybody, even a little boy, knows that once the Supreme Court has decided on an issue, it is final. And it is final, not because it is right. It is final because there is no other court to go to, apart from court of court which you can do in your house or in the church or you wait for when you die to meet him personally, if at all you will. 
So what is the whole essence of going to another court? They do these things just to see me truncate a process. They do all these things in order to frustrate a process. And the judges entertain this matter. And because most of these judges are not competent to be on that bed, I can say that authoritatively. Most of our Nigerian judges are corrupt and not competent because they are not appointed judges based on merit. They are appointed judges just to do the bidding of two appointments. The governor comes up, he nominates somebody, appoints the person the judge, and that is that judge becomes a yeoman. He becomes the governor's son. Oh, I have this case sent to that judge. That is why I like what the NJC did recently with certain judges, including a judge in reverse, concerning expert here. You see, so most of the a, a decent judge, an honorable judge, will dismiss the suit immediately. But I and I am happy with what this present judge did. This one that stuck out the matter. I'm happy. But once I say what is encouraging this is because we have corrupt judges. If most of these judges will do exactly what this man has done, I tell you, most of these frivolous uh, 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 suits will end. And the lawyer should also be penalized. They just collect money. A lawyer knows that what he's doing is bad, but he's just because he wants to collect that money to buy petrol, or All he right, wants open to collect that money to uh, build a house, like, a, a, like his colleague who is a son or something, he says, Give me. Give Open me, up give me, let's, me. It is wrong. let's look at the leadership newspaper and uh, would like to also share your thoughts on the fact that Ibube Agu Vigilante beheaded in a boy state. What's the hope then? We're asking, I mean, we have seen that at the regional level, they're coming up with security architectures to ensure that security is restored, lives and properties are protected. Now those who are trying to protect the people are also being killed. Is there really any hope now? There's no this a hazard of the profession. It's, it's, been like, uh, uh, it's the local security office. It's like the police, the army, the navy, or what have you. So it's as unfortunate as it is. And I, I want to urge all those concerned to unearth the killer so that they get their just desire. But as bad as it is, you know, it is, it is the hazard of the profession. As you are now, if you are assigned to a beat, a war front beat, you go and anything happens to you, as unfortunate as it is, it's the hazard of the profession. So he has been decapitated, may he so rest in peace, but, and you cannot stop it. That is the truth, you cannot stop it. That is, that you can't stop crime, you can't stop murder, you can only reduce, not that you can stop it. So don't think that this will be the end of the, uh, the end decapitation. It is not going to be the end of the decapitation. No, keep decapitating. People might say, what is Obnabo talking about? Oh, he's so insensitive. But Obnabo is saying the facts. Hmm. If you sign, one well, the moment you agree to be a member of a vigilante, that is the day you have also ag agreed, submitted your, uh, how will I put it, your lifespan is now in the hand of human beings. Because the criminals will come after you. They will definitely come after you. You are a target. But do you do you think that yeah, these vigilante groups? Press, yes. Do you think that these vigilante groups Sorry? actually lack uh, the intelligence? Because generally speaking, if you look at the security architecture, now one of the concerns that a lot of persons have raised and the issue is the fact that our security architecture as a country doesn't really, I mean, it's not very sufficient with intelligence. Could this also be the case with the local vigilantes? It comes across the board. You have the vigilante because you believe that they are closer to the grassroots. And so, because every crime starts from within. What I mean from within. Uh, if, for example, there is robbery in Buguma, the book, people from Buguma, in that kind of local government area of privacy, people from Buguma must be part of that crime. They must be accomplished for that crime to succeed. And if you have the policeman in Portacop or the policeman in Buguma might not necessarily know those involved, but his own siblings, those Buguma people, those from Buguma, unless they don't want to disclose their identity, will tell you those involved in a crime in their locality. Every crime is local. So that's why we talk of vigilance, because they know the, the people, they know the layout, they know everything about that community. And it's, unless 
unless, like I said, they are complicit, it is extremely difficult for you to successfully commit a crime in any locality. And that is why you have the vigilantes. Okay. But okay. don't also forget that these vigilantes are seen as enemies of, in quote, progress. The criminals are not happy. And if they know that you're strong and you're good, they will come after you. On the issue of intelligence, it comes across both. But that, should, that is not the problem with the vigilante. You might be very much surprised that a member of that is group is an accomplice. It's complicit. You might, you might be very much surprised okay. for them to have beheaded it or it's just a victim of accident. All right, all right, Mr. The Kuchara. issue of intelligence, it comes across board, not just vigilante. Because even the police, the army, all of them. Is yeah. that they, they are, they are, in most cases, they are aware, but they remain silent because they benefit from the fruits of the crime. Thank or you. they have been instructed by the authorities uh, uh, to remain silent. Thank you, Mr. Kuchara. Let's stay with security and go back uh, a bit to the, um, uh, the Nigerian Tribune. Um, since we own security, uh, the the problem of, of, of insecurity in Nigeria's northern parts, uh, especially banditry, has given a lot of people cause for concern. It's been an issue that just has refused to go away. On page 27 of the Nigerian Tribune, we have a story as highlighted on the front page. Bandits in military uniform kill three. Bandits in military uniform kill three destroy 11 houses in Taraba. What can we do to make this problem go away? Now we're hearing that they are dressing like the army, Ms. Nkotaria. There is nothing you can do about it. Because unless you're going to tell me that you're going to, even if you need to stop the sale of this military uniform, the fatigue and so on in the market, most of these people don't get it from the market. They get the uniform from their uh, cohort in the military. So what are they going to do about it? And when you see a man in military uniform on the road stopping you, you don't know if it's a genuine military man or a fake military man. You, you, you have to stop. There is really nothing you can do about that. Nobody should come up with any kind of theory. What are you going to identify the fake or genuine policeman? Fake or genuine military man. There is no way of going to identify it. The only person that can do the career action are military men themselves. Yeah, I just want to that. And for you to find out that the you must approach the investor. The civilian cannot look at the man in uniform and say, Show me your ID card. Oh, show me your this. Uh, I'll ask one uh, um, uh, 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 military question or the other to, and to find out and uh, ascertain if the person is a military man or not. The civilian does not even know that. He doesn't even know what to ask. So only the military can do that. And that is what they have been doing, trying to identify those fake soldiers. Every day we see on television, we have, most of them have been arrested, and I hope they have been prosecuted, but we only hear of arrest, we don't hear of prosecution. But these things are possible because they have their cohorts, they have their accomplices in the military itself. Look at the police. They are talking of arms and ammunition, big guys being missing, and they have something thousand arms and ammunition being missing. The National Assembly has called for probe. But I'm waiting for the outcome of that. How? Who will invade the armory? We never heard of anybody invading that armory. So how did it get in? The policemen, both men and officers, handed these arms and ammunition over to the criminals. And that's why they're missing. Because if they had given the arms and ammunition to policemen, it would have been declared missing. They handed them over to the criminals. And that's why they're missing. And these criminals being deported, they are used to that. That's what is going on. Oh, for that one, They hand over the uniform to them. There is nothing you can do. Even if you stop the sale in the market, I had almost stop the sale of with the uh, uniform and all sorry, uh, uh, fatigue and all of this. That is what they don't get it from the market. So in a minute, I'd like they to share your from thoughts. The military boys in the, in the, sorry? So I mean, we're running out of time, but I, I really like to share your thoughts oh, on this one. Uh, it has to do with the subsidy removal and the fact that labor has intensified mobilization for protests. The federal government is also saying that the plan action is unnecessary. What do, where does this leave us? What's the essence of the protest? And what should, uh, you know, government do? In one minute.
The government is quickly shifting the blame, saying NMPC is now a public uh, a limited liability company. But nevertheless, the government is very insensitive. This was an executive bill. It wasn't a bill from that. It's a manager from the executive bank. So the government is trying to do all, use all kinds of subterfuges to uh, ensure the increase, removal of sources and ensure the increase of petrol products, which will eventually have serious financial negative effects on Nigeria. That's why I said the government is very insensitive. Because it's an executive bill. So the government had, had initial had this in mind that it was not going to subsidize it at all. Because this is the same government that said the PDP government was lying when it's not for subsidizing. So because it doesn't want to subsidize anymore, what it did was to come up with this bill and make NNPC uh, a limited liability company so that it would divorce itself from the issue of subsidy and transfer. It was only putting the blame, trying to make NNPC the scapegoat. That's why you have been like, it's not a limited liability company, the company is so long ago. Who, who, the bill originated from the executive bank. So I mean, it, it has the slot. It's only a strategy. So is the protest yes, necessary? Exactly. The federal government is saying that the pro planned protest by, uh, you know, uh, this... Buhari himself protested. Buhari himself protested. He led the protest. So why is it not necessary? Why would the should keep... The problem is that they have faith anymore in our labor movement. Because after a while, do you hear the judges, the British accommodation, and the government is saying this, and that the government has promised they are suspended. Then after six months, you say, oh, the government has renewed, you are going to embark on the program. I don't have faith in our labor unions anymore. But please, yes, that's true. Because you cannot resign yourself to faith. And Larry to me once said, it's madness. All right. All so right. we cannot just resign ourselves and allow the federal government to do whatever it wants to do with Nigerians. Thank no. you. Thank you, Mr. President. Don't Sorry. forget, when a man is pushed to the world, he bounces back to the double level. We are not talking about a protest now. This protest is going to be a dress rehearsal of the calamity that will befall Nigeria. That will befall Nigeria, rather, should the government go ahead with this city. Thank, thank you, you, thank you very much, Mr. Secretary. Always an explosive time with you, and uh, we definitely, certainly, can wait to have you again. Oponabo and Kotaria is uh, public affairs thank analyst. So He's been our guest on uh, the new super segment right here on the breakfast this morning.